visualizing from the end. This is what I'm going to teach you in this video, and it's very important to understand this, and this can really assist your visualization skills. If you follow my instructions in this video, you're going to learn how to think from the end rather than thinking of the end with your visualizations. This is actually something that Neville Goddard covered that you may not know about. This isn't a really popular book of his. It's called Freedom for All. And in this chapter, he breaks this down in detail of how to think or visualize from the end rather than thinking of the end. And you can know in your visualization whether you're thinking from the end or of the end while you're actually doing it. You can test it this way. I'm also going to give you other examples, like examples that you can truly understand of how you can start using this yourself to determine and figure out how to visualize from the end rather than visualizing of the end after I get done reading this excerpt out of Freedom for All by Neville Goddard. All right, so pay close attention here. And as we go through this excerpt at the end of it, he gets into this, but we have to start from the top here. And I have to explain all of this to you to get the full meaning of this. So the blessing or making of a place real. You are now seated in your apartment in New York City, contemplating the joy that would be yours if you were on an ocean liner sailing across the great Atlantic. And then he quotes a Bible verse here. The symbolic nature of this Bible verse is, is he's in translating this Bible verse from its symbolic language. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, ye may be also. So this is from John 14, 2, 3. So your eyes are closed. You have consciously released the New York apartment and in its place. You sense and feel that you are on an ocean liner. You are seated in the deck chair. There is nothing around you but the vast Atlantic. So this is a very important part of this, but it's not the most important part that we're about to get into. But the first thing that you do, I want to give you an example. Wherever you live, wherever you usually visualize or wherever you create feeling states, that's where you're going to be. Okay. So if it's in New York, it's in California, if it's in a different country, it's in Canada, wherever it may be, that's where you're visualizing. So you're visualizing yourself to already to be doing something that you want to do and being becoming that, that version of you that is now on this ship or in this new car or in this new house, whatever it is that you're manifesting. So then you're walking around within this mansion that you want to live in or this house you want to live in. And you're walking around touching different things and you're making it real in your imagination. And then you go here to this level. Fix the reality of the ship or the house and ocean so that in this state you can mentally recall the day you were seated in your New York apartment dreaming of this day at sea. So this is the key. When you're in your bed or wherever you are visualizing and you create yourself to be on an ocean liner or in a new house, whatever you're manifesting, and you make that so real in your imagination that you can look back on yourself back to your house you're you're looking back on yourself in the past when you contemplated the idea or when you were visualizing it so that present moment you have now gone into the future made it now so so if today was january and you were manifesting something in february you have in your visualization you made february so real in your imagination that you were able to look back into january from your visualization but you're actually visualizing right then, but you've made it so real that you can actually look back on yourself in January. So we'll finish this right here. Then I'll explain this in depth even more so you completely understand this. So in your imagination, see the memory picture of yourself back there in your New York apartment. So you're going back to January. You are in January now. You're visualizing in January. But your visualization and thing that you're creating is actually February, but you've made your visualization so real that you truly feel that you're now in February. And when you feel that you're truly in February, you're now looking back to January because it's in the past. That was a month ago, but it's still really the present moment. But you're looking back on yourself and be like, oh my gosh, I remember when I was visualizing this because it feels so real to you because you've made February now but you're really visualizing in January. So if you succeed in looking back on your New York apartment without consciously returning there, then you have successfully prepared the reality of this voyage or successfully visualized from the end or thinking from the end, visualizing from the end, living from the end in your visualization. 
So this is super important to understand this because when you have created February now, even though it's January, you're looking back and then you're contemplating or you're thinking about, you're kind of laughing about it. Like, oh, I remember now you're in your house, your mansion, your car, you, you know, a brand new car, whatever it is, or in that new relationship, whatever you're manifesting. And then you're looking back from that scene in February or from February back to January. You'd be like, I was visualizing this to happen and it came true. And you can make that part of your visualization. But when you look back to January without consciously returning there, you're actually feeling that it, it's, a, it's a month in the past in your visualization. That's when you have successfully prepared that reality to happen to you. And Neville Goddard covers this in this book, Freedom for All. He doesn't cover this anywhere else, I don't believe, maybe a couple other times, but it was very vague. But he covers that in here because I'm getting a lot of questions about this. How do I know that I have, you know, really, whether I'm thinking from the end or of the end or visual, am I visualizing correctly? This is when you know that you have visualized correctly is when you're in January visualizing from your from your residence something in February or March or wherever you want to, to make it, but it's just an example. You're going somewhere else. You don't even have to put a, a, a time on it, but you're visualizing and you're making that so real. You're driving your new car. You're really enjoying it. You know, you're having, you know, you're excited about it or the relief of it. You make it so real that you 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 run this act over in your imagination so many times that it becomes so real to you. Then you're as you're driving, you're thinking back, you're like, wait a minute, I remember when I visualized this in January. And if you could think about that without consciously returning there and really looking back on yourself, then you have successfully prepared the reality of this to happen because this is what um, Richard Feynman won the Nobel Prize on, uh, shocking the positron, which was photographed in the cosmos. And when you break this down and when you get to this level, this, this has to happen to you because you are actually experiencing it to be real in your, in your world. And I've discussed this before about experiencing something in your imagination to be real just like this. And then it has to happen because there is no difference between what you're imagining and what the subconscious mind feels that you're imagining from the simulation. Because you feel that your simulation is real. And when you feel that your imagination is real, then there's no difference between the two. And the subconscious mind feels and God understands that that's already happened to you. So it's inevitable that something, if not the same exact thing happens, but it'll be something very, very similar to that is going to come into your life because you don't have to force a belief when you experience something. Because if you truly experience something in your imagination, you don't need to believe anything. The belief is subsumed within the experience of it. And then the knowing of it is subsumed within the experience of it. Because if you experience something, you're... You're walking down the street and you find a suitcase full of, you know, $500,000 and you pick it up, you open it and you take out the bills and you're counting the bills. And this is, and you're doing this within the simulation. Do you, and you take it home and you do whatever with it after that's already happened. Do you have to force a belief or force a knowing that that just happened to you? No, you don't because you actually experience that to happen. And there's no difference between you experiencing that in the simulation or experiencing in that in your own imagination. So when you can get to this level of thinking or visualizing from the event and look back on yourself from the moment you were visualizing and without returning there consciously, without actually returning there consciously and then be like, oh my gosh, I'm back in January, then you have full control of your destiny and what you're going to manifest because there's nothing that can stop you because we're living in an artificial holographic simulation. And the subconscious mind or God doesn't know the difference between a real imaginal act where you're thinking from it that it's happening to you and it's already happened to you, then there's no difference. It doesn't understand the difference between the two. So when you experience up in the simulation and you feel that it's real, all your senses are involved and you make it real, you don't have to convince yourself that it's real. You don't have to convince the subconscious mind that it's real. You never question whether that's real. And that's the same way when you can do this with your, with your imaginal acts. When you have control of the direction of your attention in the present moment, and you have total control within your visualization. You can actually get to this level. And I'm actually attaching a card on the screen for you. It's a guided visualization, absolutely free. It's a YouTube video that's absolutely free. I'll put a card on the screen. It's going to walk you through a visualization to strengthen the muscle of your mind to get to this level. To get to this level and if you keep at it you can get to this level if you keep doing it 
and you master this technique. And let me know if you already are at this level in the comments box below, because I want to know who has done this, who has gotten this far, who has had success with their visualization and has gotten to this level. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. May I tell you a story when I was a boy in the, in the little island of Barbados. We were a very large family, nine boys and a girl, my father, my mother, and my grandmother on my mother's side. And we had the usual thing you have in the islands. It's a tropical island. We had ducks, we had chickens, we had sheep and goats and cows for the milk. Because there was no dairy when I was a boy. You either had a cow or you had no milk. Or you had a goat or you had no milk. Unless a neighbor had more than they could use and then they gave it to you. Well, we had a few cows and we had the usual thing like a farm. When my mother decided that, say, two weeks from today, we were going to have ducks for dinner, she would say to one of the boys, any one of them, would say to me, Neville, take a few ducks and put them away. Well, I knew exactly what she meant. You would take three ducks for our size family, maybe four ducks, because there are not so much on the duck. But you would take the ducks. And you put them into a pain by themselves, away from the other ducks. Because the normal run of ducks, we fed fish. Fish was plentiful and cheap. In fact, when I was a boy, you bought fish all a penny. There was no refrigeration, so the boats came in late, around sun, sundown. What they didn't sell on the beach would rot. We had no refrigeration. So you could take a bucket down and buy all the fish you wanted for a penny or that use the next day for bait. So we fed the ducks the fish and the intervals of fish, anything out of the fish. Well, they thrived on it. They got good and fat, but they tasted just like fish. They fed on fish, and they became fish. Mother said, we want ducks. All right, so you took four ducks, and you put them away. And then for the next two weeks, for in ten days, they will completely change the odor of that flesh if you were consistent in the change of feed. And you put the sour milk, corn, wheat, anything you had, but not fish. You couldn't just give them this during the day, and because fish was cheap, give them a little fish at night. You couldn't mix up the diet. So for the next two weeks, you gave them that changed diet. May I tell you, if you didn't, what happened? We couldn't have ducks for dinner. If I made the mistake, my mother said to me, I want ducks in two weeks, and I didn't obey her order. When I finally discovered my mistake, and did it, say, a week later, well, a week was not enough. So I didn't want to confess my mistake, but the oven confessed it. And so the heads were chopped off and the ducks were all plucked and prepared and then all of a sudden all over the neighborhood the gullers are having fish for Sunday because you couldn't eat it the thing it, it was a duck it looks like a duck it is a duck but it tasted like a fish for it fed upon fish for the two weeks or rather at least one week it took ten days to convert the flesh from the fish were normally fed because it was cheap into the wheat or the corn or the milk. That was a lesson I learned. If I am going to be the vine of eternity, and I am the eternal vine, I can only grow what I feed myself mentally. What am I feeding myself morning, noon, and night? It, I cannot change it during the day and say, a little fish because it's cheap, What's going to happen here? This is nothing. And all of a sudden I read some stupid little thing and I react. That's my fish. And I want a bird that really is milk fed. I have got to actually put myself on a diet, a mental diet, and stick to it. And then I will bear the fruit of that changed diet. It's entirely up to us. All these little things happen in our life to teach us a lesson. Who would have thought when I was a boy, when mother said to me, 
you have ducks in two weeks and you put the ducks away, that I would have learned the most fantastic lesson. I didn't learn it then. Many a time I made the mistake. And so we had to settle for something else we had in the house. But no matter what it was, couldn't have ducks. You couldn't eat it. You looked at it and nothing is more displeasing than to look at a duck and eat fish. And I love fish. But let it look like a fish. But don't look like a duck and I'm eating fish. Well, that is man's being. I am the vine of eternity. And you say within yourself, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser.